we, uh, I live on a little ranch, and I communicate with all the ranchers around me, and we're, we're constantly talking on the phone. Somebody gets a tractor stuck, and we're all helping each other. And uh, about, well, it was a, a, several years back, we had uh, some hogs move in on the area ranches there, and it's just like all of a sudden they showed up all at the same time. And I don't know why I'm talking about hogs. If you were here last week, I've been having nightmares about pigs ever since, you know. <laughs> you had to go back and listen to it. But uh, the people started sending me pictures of hog roots. And we haven't had for hog problems at the house. But that we had hog roots and, and pushing up against fence. And then people started putting out uh, tr uh, traps. And, all, and we're communicating. And so, man, where did these hogs come from? They're tearing the pasture up. This, this is like crazy. And we're all combining efforts. I got my night vision scope out and we're ready. You know, everybody's got a gun by the door. If we see some hogs, they're not going to tear up. We're not going to let them take over our little ranches around there. And uh, so, well, one day um, I was ready and Wes and Ty were there and I looked out across the a creek that goes across the back pasture behind the house and I saw this spotted thing and I thought it was a dog out there and I looked and I said, no, that was a big old huge hog. And she jumped up out of the creek. And I said, hey, boys, there's some hogs. I had another black one. And they just start bailing up out of the creek. I run and get the rifle. And I said, y'all want to shoot a hog? And, and uh, the boy said, oh, go ahead, Daddy. They shoot pigs. And I shot that big old sow, big old thing. And I said, and I said my favorite words to my boys. <laughs> if you've ever seen me in a ranch rodeo with them, used to, I'd say, go to them, boys. I'd do all the roping <laughs> and let them do all the mugging. Go to them, boys. That's what I said to them. Go to them, boys. Skin that big old sow, and let's get her to the processor. She's a big old pretty thing. And I shot another black hog it was about that big and i was all proud of myself you know and we're doing some damage and so i'm calling all the local ranchers and say hey we got us a couple of hogs and there's a bunch of them though and then uh so we're all proud ranchers we, we're starting to make a little dent that we the boys got that hog skint and put an ice chest took her to the processor and Man, she was fat. We just couldn't get over how fat. We were just, while, we were, while they were skinning her, I said, man, we ain't seen a hog this fat in forever. This thing, she just, we even got bacon off of her and everything. And so we uh, sent that out there. And then, of course, we stayed ready. We knew there were more hogs. And a few days later, here comes some more hogs running across the back of my field. And I was ready. I studied looking out my back office over that field. And I ran out and grabbed a gun. I shot a couple more hogs. And we kept shooting hogs and, and uh, everybody was, seems like they were all at my, I was, nobody else was catching them in traps and I was the only one getting them. I catch them when they come across the place and I was giving the hogs away and people were eating those hogs and everybody's happy, you know, and, and then I get a call from one of my other neighbors over in this direction and he said, have you seen any hogs? And I said, yeah, boy, we've been knocking them out, buddy. I said, this big old hog came through there and shot her. And, and I've been giving these other black pigs away. They weigh about 150 pounds. And, and I was all proud. I thought he was going to say, yeah, hey, thank you for getting the hogs. And there was this dead silence that came over the phone. I said, that's weird. He said, was there one big old sow that was spotted? Oh, yeah, yeah, I got her. She's the first one. She's at the processor right now more dead silence I'm like what in the world he said were there about 10 black hogs with her that probably weighed 150 I know something's wrong now <laughs> and I said yes sir that's the ones I've been shooting and giving away he said after a mo long moment of silence I think you shot my mama's my wife's pet pig said her name was little miss piggy <laughs> and I felt about that tall, you know. <laughs> but hey, you don't let, anyway. <laughs> you know what farmers and ranchers and cowboys do to hogs. And, and so uh, that's where all the hog rooting came from. And what happened is that they didn't want to be pinned up. This old Sal, she decided it was better off to be free and push through the gate. And, uh, and things didn't work out too well for little Miss Piggy. <laughs> 
I did take them the meat, <laughs> and I did pay for the processing, and it, we ended up good friends, and they offered to give me some of the meat, and I took it, and, uh, you know, it was just, uh, it, it didn't work out the way little Miss Piggy uh, wanted it to work out, and that's kind of the way things are for us, is a lot of times we think if we just get free, this situation, or what well, maybe something you're in, and, and you, you, you want, if you just get through that out of that gate, you know, and you'd be free and you wouldn't have to be held back and you wouldn't be pinned up and you could just do whatever you wanted to anytime you wanted to do it. And that's not the way it is for human beings. Jesus talked about a story and he made it very clear in Matthew chapter 7, if you want to turn in your Bibles and find that, he uses the illustration with some gates that make what we all need to do really, really clear, really clear. But in Matthew chapter 7, starting in verse 13 and 14, Jesus, he paints a very clear picture. I love preaching like Jesus does. I pray that I don't want to preach like anybody else. I want to pray the way, preach the way Jesus does. And he uses stories and illustrations, and, and, and I just love that. And so Jesus is painting a picture an illustration, and he's using gates. And Matthew chapter 7, verse 13, y'all been sitting down for a little bit. Would you please just stand up with me for the reading of God's Word and stretch your word, your legs, in, in honor of the Lord. It says in verse 13, chapter 7, Matthew, it says, Enter by the narrow gate. For the gate is wide, and the way is easy that leads to destruction, and those who enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow, and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are very few. Let's pray. Lord, uh, I just, you know the desperation of my heart right now is I can't do this without you. And nobody's lives are going to be changed without you here today. I do know that Satan is doing everything he can to stop us from going through the right gate. And I know he'll do it at all costs and never stop. And I know some, some people under the sound of my voice right now haven't gone through the narrow gate that you're talking about right now. And I pray that there would be a herd of folks today trying to cram their way through the narrow gate and get right with you. All over the world listening to this message, in this room, Lord, all through the balcony, examine every heart, every person sitting up there, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name you just have an encounter with them. All through the floor here, examine every heart, Leave no one behind here today. In the name of Jesus, I pray. The tougher they are, the more I pray you minister to them. The more they think they don't need you, I pray you show up in their hip pocket like they ain't, you ain't never done. I pray that you speak to them clearly. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Have a seat. The Bible says Jesus said this very clearly many times. He says, he that has an ear, let him hear. And the only way you're going to get this message today is if the Lord speaks it to you. So why is it so important that we finally, somewhere in our life, find, we find that narrow gate? Because the wide, easy gate, it has all this momentum going towards the wide gate. It's very wide and easy, and it leads to the killer pens of hell. And that's why we need to find the narrow gate. So how, how do you keep from going through that wide, easy gate? Look back at verse 13. It says, enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide. You just kind of go that way. It's easy to get through a wide gate. You don't really have to change your direction to get through a wide gate. It's just easy to go through that. It's easy. It leads to destruction, Jesus is saying. And those who enter by it are many. It's wide. It's easy. Anytime you're moving cattle or goats or sheep, you know what I'm talking about if you've ever done that, or pigs, 
The wider the gate is, the easier it is to get them through it and pin them. And the smaller the gate is, the harder it is to do that. Life has many gates. And this wide gate that Jesus is talking about is easy to go through. Your friends are going through it. Maybe people you're working with are going through it. The person that you're married to may be going through it. The person that you're dating or engaged to may be going through it. Your best friend that you've had from old school may be going through it. Uh, the, your people that are in this hobbies or whatever you do are going through that wide gate. It's, a, it's an easy, wide gate to go through. But Jesus says that it leads to destruction. And he's talking about hell. You see, God didn't put us here on this earth to go to hell. He put us here to make a difference for the Lord Jesus Christ and bring others to Jesus Christ. And we get this giant reward, not, on earth, not just on earth, but also for all eternity. And when he says destruction, he's talking about hell where there's torment and where it's a place of regret. And you can't get out of it. There's no backing up. You can't redirect. You can't reroute. It's a done deal. And he says destruction. He says most people are going to go through that wide gate. So how do you keep from going through that wide, easy gate? What Jesus say? Number one, choose the hard way. That's what he said. Look at that. Choose the hard way. Number one. Do you all have that slide up there? There you go. Choose the hard way. That's what Jesus said. He said, well, hang on. I don't like choosing the hard way. Look at Matthew chapter uh, 7, verse 14, the first part of that. He's talking about hard choices. Choose. Jesus is saying, choose to make hard decisions to do this. It says, for the gate is narrow, and the way is hard that leads to life. So, what feels right to you, what you think is right, could be the very worst decision of your entire life. Like little Miss Piggy made a wrong decision and a choice to be free. You and I are the same. There's an easy thing for me to do. One of the easiest things in my life to do is eat pecan pie. There might be one thing that's a little more easy, and that would be that sopapilla cheesecake that Miss Charlie makes when it's hot and comes out of the oven. But pecan pie has to be, I guess, probably my favorite dessert, especially those homemade pecan pies. Now, what's easy for me is I could eat that pecan pie for breakfast with a cup of coffee. Come on, somebody. Light your head looking. Y'all know what a dessert piece of pie is good for breakfast. What's easy for me, too, is to eat a piece of pecan pie for lunch. If it's sitting there, come on now. You got the rest of the day to work it off. But what's even easier is to take that piece of pecan pie and cut a little bit bigger piece than normal and put it in the microwave for exactly 33 seconds. There's something about 33 seconds here. And then get some homemade blue bell vanilla ice cream and put a big blob right on top of it. That's easy for me. The problem is, if I do everything that's easy right here, you know, it's, it'll kill you. When Wes was here, he, he got me, said, Daddy, you got to do something. You're getting old, you're getting fat, and you're eating too much pecan pie. <laughs> and, and he sent me. So he, uh, he talked me into going to the gym with him, and, and I... I wanted to spend some time with him, and I did. I, I went to the gym, and, and uh, he figured out I was a tougher case than what he thought. He, you know, he's, a, he's studying to do that for a, a living and going to college right now to, as a kinesiologist, and he has different sponsors and all this weight training stuff. And he got to looking at me and all my broken stuff and the torn ligaments in my neck and upper back and my shoulder being torn up, my elbow. And he... Uh, so what he did is he figured out a regiment for me with all those broken parts and started out lightweight, and, and I'm, I'm doing better. <laughs> it's hard, though. You got to shut things down. It costs you money every month to get a, a membership at the gym, and you have to organize and be disciplined, and you go through, and you work out, and you resist against the weights, 
and it's not easy. It's inconvenient for me. Honestly, I feel better after I go, but everything the whole week trying to stop and trying to organize and trying to schedule and get down there, it's a hard way for me to go. I don't have time to do it. I don't want to do it. I know I have to do it. And the, so, but the, you see the benefits, though, is when you lift weights and your muscles and your knees or your legs, this legs tore up. And I have to use light weight in doing those leg extensions and leg curls. I got to be careful, but I'm getting stronger and I feel better and I'm getting healthy and I'm losing some weight and I'm, I feel more energy than I've had in a long time, but I'm having to take the hard way. It's like no pain, no gain. And so Jesus is saying, choose the hard way. Choose the hard way. And without that, my point is you can do what's fun. Jesus said, everybody's doing what's fun, what feels like, what, if it feels good, do it. Go do what's fun, and, and it'll kill you. But if you choose this hard way he's talking about, it may be a struggle. It will be a struggle. It's going to take some grit and some determination, some hard choices, but it's going to bring health, and it's going to bring what he's talking about, eternal life in your life. So how, do you, how else can you make sure you choose the right Gate number two is don't follow the crowd. Don't follow the crowd. Look at that in the second part of that verse in Matthew 7, 14. He says, for the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life. And those who find it are few. Few is not the crowd. Few is a remnant. Few is just a few. Just ones that aren't in the crowd. It's ones that are going, aren't hanging out necessarily in the crowd all the time. You have to somehow or another separate yourself from the crowd. Or you'll just go right with the crowd. And Jesus is saying that you choose the hard way. And to do that, you must not follow the crowd. When you choose to go through that narrow gate, it's great blessings what Jesus is saying, but if you choose to go through that hard, that, that wide, easy gate, it has eternal consequences. Jesus was talking about going through the narrow gate in another section of Scripture in the book of Luke, if you want to turn there, chapter 13. He was talking about this same narrow gate. He said, go through this gate like little Miss Piggy ended up doing, she went through the wide gate. She pushed through the gate. And, and life on earth is just like that. We think it's the thing we need to do. We feel like it's the thing we need to do is press and go with the things of the world. And so we test it and we push against that wide gate. And it's easy to open and it's easy to go through. And it, when we choose that gate, destruction comes. And so here's Jesus talking about if you go through that wide gate, this is what comes. If you don't, if you, let's say you miss that gate, you miss the narrow gate. Look at what he says in, in Luke chapter 13, verse 27. But he said, but he will say, I tell you, I never knew you. And they were asking him. These people were asking Jesus, hey, how, how, how many people are going to go through the narrow? How many people are going to be saved? And he says, this is what Jesus is answering. He says, but he said, he will say, I tell you, I don't know you. He says, you are, and, and that's a bad thing. When Jesus says, hey, I never knew you. I don't know you. I don't even know where you're from. And you're trying to get back through that gate. You've missed the narrow gate. And you're back knocking on the door, knocking on the gate, trying to get through. Jesus is saying, where are you from? He says, I don't know you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. When he says, Jesus says, I don't know you, that's a gnosko love. It's a relationship. 
It's, it's, it's this thing that happens between, it's a, the closest thing maybe in, in the Bible is, is a marriage ceremony and, and becoming one. And, and it's not just a physical marriage thing, it's a spiritual marriage. When you, when, you're, when you receive a bride and a groom come together, it's a spiritual union that God blesses in marriage. He doesn't bless it any other way. You can't have it by having sex with somebody. You can't have it by doing, uh, doing anything else it's a marriage relationship and Jesus says we're the bride of Christ and so this is this thing he's this gnosko love gnosko relationship it's I know you and Jesus is saying when I don't know you because you didn't come through the narrow gate I don't know you that's what he's saying I don't have a relationship with you and in this section of scripture they kept knocking and said didn't we eat together didn't we do all this stuff together he said he said, I don't know you. I don't have this relationship with you. He says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. So why is it so critical that we choose the narrow gate? Look at this. It's not that you know Jesus. What's critical is that Jesus knows you. I want you to think about that. Because we think in our mind, and Satan wants us to think, we'll all go to heaven if we just say a little prayer, or if we go to church, or we fill out a little connect card, or if we go to saddle up, or we get baptized. We did all this stuff, and so nah, it was wee, 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 ah, stuff you do. It doesn't make a hill of beans. You can't get through the narrow gate. You can only get through the narrow gate if Jesus knows you. It's a relationship. It's not a prayer. It's not an okay I prayed that prayer. I got baptized. I, no, 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 no. I did that when I was nine years old, and I was all excited, and everybody pat me on the back. And then I was an alcoholic, I think, by the time I was 14, and through my 20s, and just wrecked my life, my family, anybody I came in contact with. I'm telling you, being baptized ain't your answer. Knowing Jesus Christ is your answer, and Him knowing you. And when Jesus knows you, you will run to that horse trough and get baptized. If you don't know him, you're scared to death of him. You ain't going to stand up for him. You're going to go the wide, easy way. He said it leads to destruction. It's not going to work for you. It's not that you know Jesus. The devil knows Jesus, knows who he is. He said Jesus knows you. Why? Because if you go through the wrong gate, look at that next verse in verse 38. He says, Jesus says, there will be weeping. What's that? Mourning, sorrow, grieving, and gnashing of teeth. What's that mean? There's going to be torment, pain, agony that you can't escape. When you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and the prophets and the kingdom and yourself is thrust out, your mind, little Miss Piggy died and went to an ice chest and she's done. When you die and when I die, we, it goes on and all this is in life is just a little bitty test that is to see which gate you and me are going to go through. And that's all it is. And then your life begins. Then eternity begins. And so you got all this regret and you're thrust out with mourning and torment. And you remember all the choices. Luke chapter 13, verse 23, look at that. It says, and then one said to him, Lord, he says, there are few. How many are going to be saved by them? How many people are going to get through there? And he says, verse 24, in Luke 13, 24, he says, strive to enter through the narrow gate. Strive. It's not going to be easy. Strive, in the original text, means a great struggle against conflict. You're having to press forward. You're having to push through it. And so it's choices, decisions, hard decisions that you make to go through the narrow, narrow gate to strive there. But once you get through that narrow gate, Jesus becomes your shepherd. And when you got Jesus as your shepherd, ain't nothing going to come against you. No weapon formed against you anymore will ever prosper. Somebody shout amen because you're forgiven and you don't have all 
all that regret and all that junk and all those pit. I had the memories, but I got the blood of Jesus spread over me. And I'm telling you, I, when Jesus doesn't, he shed his blood over my sins. And God says, I don't remember. It's gone as far as the east is from the west. When you go through that narrow gate, you get you a daddy, you get you a savior, you get you a Lord, you get filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, and everything changes from you trying to find your way to him leading you to greener pastures as your shepherd, as your caretaker. Never leave you, never forsake you. You get branded with the blood of Jesus. Your sin covered, gone. Powerful, powerful, powerful. But you got to understand that Satan is going to do everything that he can possibly do to get you, to keep you from going through a narrow gate. I brought this narrow gate. This really is the only thing it's really good for is maybe in a horse stall, but if you're working cattle, this is your entryway gate to get into the working pens. And it's not worth anything to get a cow through. Now, if you, uh, if you were to have, uh, if you were to have this open and you don't have alleys coming into this thing, I'm going to tell you, it's absolutely next to impossible Y'all can see it from your angle for a cow to go through a little four-foot gate or any kind of animal. Unless you were to have all these corrals and pens and funnels coming up to they're not going through that gate. There is no way you can herd uh, a four-legged animal. I can't even herd y'all, much less a four-legged animal through this gate. And There's no way it's going to happen. It's next to impossible. The cattle will just... Take the easy way. They're going to go this way. They're going to go this way. And, and that's what Jesus is trying to say. It's, it's really easier to go the other way. But he's trying to get in your mind the choices you're going to have to make if you're going to go to heaven, if you're going to be in this situation, if you're going to do this. You know, it's, it's the only way. I, I remember working cattle for somebody. These weren't my cattle. And the boy, there's some good-looking cattle. And I remember the prettiest little Charlay heifer in the bunch. And we got through working her, and she was about that big. I mean, she was one that wasn't going to go to the sale barn. She was one that was going to be a replacement heifer. And every, everybody looked, boy, that's a, you know, a good-looking heifer. We got through working all the cattle, and everything was fine, and, and everything was cool. And they had this little gate over in the corner of the pen that looked like all they had to do is just open that gate and let them back out to pasture. And so they did. We did. We walked over there. The man that owned the cattle took that gate and he opened it. And the cows just started funneling through the grass and they'd been worked and warmed, wormed and doctored and everything was good. And they are getting out. And what happened is this little Charlotte Hipper was looking at the chutes over there or something, and he saw this sudden she looked up, and she was the only one left in the pen. And now there, were, there was panels going across here, and this is in the corner, and this gate was open to the inside of the pen. And she panicked, and she said, hang on a second. I need to be with all them, and I'm here by myself. And she couldn't find that little gate, and she run right square into the panel, and I hollered. They were trying to get her out. I hollered there, everybody, get out of there. Get away from her. She panicked. She run back to the end of the pen, and she run as hard as she could and just lunged into that pipe fence, broke her nose, cut the, all the cartilage down in her. You could see the indention, blood going everywhere. You can't even hardly hear her breathe. She, she's just... <laughs> and the prettiest little heifer We left. I don't know what they did with her. And I think sometimes Jesus looks you right square in the eye and says, what are you doing? You're just banging your head against everything in this world. 
What are you doing? Why are you doing it this way? Why? Why? It's like this. I think the best way I could describe it. Hey, buddy. You brave sitting on the front row. You, you're kind of close to brave. You're on the third row, huh? Hey, girl. Hey. How you doing? Here's the best way I can describe this, probably. Y'all, y'all watch this. <laughs> you mind scooting out of the way, sir? <laughs> the old devil's working in your life, and he, if he knows if he can get you looking this way towards different things that dishonor God. He can make it pretty wide. He can make it pretty easy, pretty appealing. And if he can't get you through that wide gate, he keeps open to a hang on, other people are doing it. That's going to cost you too much. You don't need to even worry about that other gate. And he makes sure these gates stay wide and stay open. And you see all the light. Everything's a funnel. Everything you do heads that direction. It's so easy. It's so fun. It's just like the natural thing to do. It's the normal thing to do. The crowd's going that way. It's just whoop. It's no big deal. Everybody's doing that way. Now, if you were to go through this narrow gate and you were to come up on this stage, it'd be a little more difficult. It'd be kind of embarrassing. Everybody's going that way. You're going the opposite way. You're getting up here where everybody can see you and you give your life to Jesus and it's, it's complicated. Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock and any man open the door. There's this gate thing, this mindset. And so for you to go through this day, you got to make a decision here today to say, I'm not going with that crowd that's heading out that door. I'm staying here and I'm going to go to Jesus Christ in that narrow gate. And I'm here today to tell you that this gate is wide open. But everything to get you to this point, all hell's going to break loose in your life and in your family's life and in your job and your career and everything is going to, Satan doesn't want you to find this gate, doesn't want you to see this gate. But once you take this first step through this gate and pray to receive Jesus Christ, He'll fill you with the power of the Holy Spirit and forgive you. And this step is the greatest place you'll ever be in your life. Anybody ever step through this great let me, gate? Let me hear you say amen. amen. It's a testimony of life's change. Jesus said this in John chapter 10, verse 9. Jesus said, yes, I am the gate. He said, those who come in through me will be saved. Will you go to Jesus this morning? Will you make a decision to, to choose the hard way? Will you make a decision today to not go through and follow the crowd? Jesus said, yes, I am the gate. Those who come in through me will be saved. Y'all look at me. So you got a choice. Y'all can get up and walk right through them wide, narrow, those wide, easy gates. You can close your eyes and get out them gates. Or y'all can come to the front of this church today. Tony Plompsy is going to be down here. 
and you can come up here on the stage if you want to and walk right through this narrow gate and give your life to Jesus. Let's pray. Father, I pray in Jesus' name. The, the narrow gate's wide open for some men here to get things right with you. And some teenagers sitting in this service right now already made their mind up. They did, but the Holy Spirit, you've, you've convicted them. And I pray, Lord, they'd make a choice, a hard choice, to go through the narrow gate. You are the gate. You're here today, and you know the, God's calling you. you he's, he's calling you. He's leading you through that narrow gate. He's, he's got things headed. You're, he's pulling you to that narrow gate right now. You can feel the presence in his life telling you, just say yes to me. Just ask me. I'll come in to you. I'll change you from the inside out. And you know that's what's happening in you right now. Satan's in your other ear. Get up, walk out of the church. When the crowd, after the offering, after they do that, we're out of here. You ain't got time for this. And he's he's filling your ear with all the reasons that you don't you don't have time, not gonna do it. There's no joy on the other side of that gate. It's a lie. No, the Bible says he's a liar. If you want to go through this narrow gate Jesus is talking about, pray with me right now. Say, Jesus, everything in my life has pulled me the wrong way. But today, I choose you. You're the gate. I don't care how hard it's going to be. I choose you. Hard decisions, hard choices. I choose you. In my heart right now, I'm walking through that narrow gate. I give you my life. I'm asking you to be my shepherd. Will you forgive me for all my sin? And will you forgive me for my choices going the easy way? I'm not going to follow the crowd anymore. I'm going to follow you. And I pray in Jesus' name to be filled right now. Come into me with the Holy Spirit. Right now, fill me with the power of the Holy Spirit. Right now, be my Lord, my Savior, my boss. I choose to live for you. Lord, in just a moment, these offering buckets are fixing to come by. And I'm asking you, as we bring a whole tithe to the storehouse, that you bring blessings to every home that invests in the kingdom of God. But I pray for a great multiplication. That souls are offering today. Lord, you gave everything for us and we're giving to you right now. But Lord, we pray that you use our tithes, our offering, to bring honor to yourself. Lord, we pray you use this money to go above and beyond anything we could ever dream. I pray that, Lord, we'd reach more souls with it than we could ever dream possible. Lord, increase, multiply our influence. Lord, you've been doing that, and we're just asking you to continue to do that. Use this offering for that, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you continue to shed your presence on us in our lives, in our church. And Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you continue to give us protection. In Jesus' name, I pray.